Beautiful day here in sunny England. We're going through a heat wave right now, absolutely loving it. Enjoying the World Cup as well. England playing tonight, can't wait. England v Colombia. Anyway, I'm off to Alan's house and I'm going to aquascape an Evolution Aqua 900 freshwater. I met Alan at Aquarium Gardens. He came in to buy some plants and CO2 kit and I convinced him that he needed me to set him up an aquascape. So I'm on my way right now to Leicester in England and I'll take you through the whole day. It's going to be awesome. I'm super excited. I hope you are too. So I'm at Allen's right now and here is the EA Freshwater 900. It's got the supplied LEDs, which are both 18 watts, but Alan's also supplemented it with some extra LEDs. One of the tubes, is, which is pink, it's not on right now, but that's gonna be great for bringing out the reds of the plants, which we'll put on later. The cabinet doors are off right now, just to make access to the cabinet super simple. We've got two external canisters, Oase Biomaster 350. We've got pressurized CO2. We're gonna be using a whole range of really cool plants from aquarium gardens, really nice soil. Awesome hardscape, which I kind of pre-selected a couple of months ago now. Uh, Alan's been soaking the wood, so um, fingers crossed that's not gonna float. And I can't wait to get started, let's go. Oof. I chose this hardscape with Alan and I've forgotten how big and heavy it was. So um, I'm a bit out of breath trying to manipulate it to make it look as good as I can, but this is it. Huge piece of bog wood. There we go. And the idea is I think we're gonna have sort of roots coming down but I'm going to have a little play, put it in different positions and try to figure out which way looks the best. We've got some beautiful dragonstone as well, which I'll show you right now. So we've got five pieces of this, all similar sizes. This has been pre-soaked, so I hope it's not going to cloud the water. The hardscape process is the most important in aquascaping. It's like the backbone of the aquascape. So if you think of a, the hardscape like a human skeleton, the flesh and the blood is like the plants and the water. If you get the skeleton right to start with, you have a really kind of strong structure. And by adding the, the plants and the water, you can hopefully create a really effective aquascape. We've chosen really dominant, high impact hardscape, and we've got some beautiful plants as well. So we should have a really nice, mature looking aquascape right from the get go. Okay, so the hardscape's complete now. We've put three big bags of the Tropica soil in. If you didn't know about Tropica soil, really good product. This is the powder type, which is a much finer grain size than usual. And that just enhances this kind of sense of scale. Although the substrate is gonna be pretty much 100% planted. The soil also contains lots of nutrients to help feed the plant roots. It also has a high cation exchange capacity, which means it locks in nutrients from the water column and makes those nutrients available to the plant roots. And that's what it's all about. So really trying to give the plants the best opportunity to grow as healthily as possible. And that in turn will help prevent algae. So we're gonna plant super heavily. We've got the hardscape in now. We've used this huge piece of bog wood. I really love this. It's one of the best pieces I've ever used, I think. And we've used five pieces of dragonstone. The dragonstone is a really popular stone to work with. It has a real kind of distinct kind of dragon scale um, texture, hence the name. And it's really suitable for this layout because it has a distinct strata and we've kind of followed that flow of the wood, which you can see. We've gone for like a root kind of coming down into the water effect. And then the dragonstone is helping to accentuate that kind of flow of those roots. So there's kind of a distinct theme going on. And we, we practiced this layout at Aquarium Gardens before we bought the wood. So I kind of knew how it was going to kind of work. That's why it didn't take so long to do. So now it's a case of prepping the plants, planting. I tend to start off with four ground plants at the front and then working my way to the back and then finally attaching plants to the wood. So let's do that now. I've already prepared some of the Helanthium Tenalum green and we've split each pot. We've got three pots all together. We've split each pot probably in about 10 or 20 portions. And that's just, this is why tissue culture and this in this case Tropica 1-2 grow is super good value for money. You get so much more quantity of plants for your money. They might not be as big as a regular potted plant, but you know, look at this. This is just two pots worth and there's probably 50 
you could split it up into 100, even 200 separate plants there. So I'll just show you quickly how we prepare a pot, really easy. Take the lid off, pour away the nutrient rich growth medium. Tropic have actually a paintant on it and it's like a really kind of nice liquid which is much easier to prepare than the standard gel. So then we just pick them apart basically and you can, it, in this case they've all kind of matted together or the root structure is kind of intertwined so you can kind of unravel it and then just separate. You can be quite brutal with it. Tropica 1-2 Grow are amongst the best tissue plants available in the hobby and they tend to be really healthy. Uh, but it is a good idea to buy them as soon, you know, as soon as you can after the shop gets them in from Tropica Direct because you're going to guarantee the healthier specimens then. There will be some loose leaves and you'll get some maybe some floating matter after you've filled the tank. That's no problem. We just net that off at the end. So the great thing about Helianthem tenalum is it's a, a really nice carpeting plant and you can actually see how it grows already. It sends out runners and then each runner pops up a new plantlet there. The beauty of autofocus, lovely. Great, now we can plant these and we plant these into the dry substrate. We'll talk about that in more detail in a minute. Okay, so the Helianthium tenalum is a carpeting plant. It goes at the front of the tank and to plant it, we just grab it with our tweezers, push it into the dry soil and hey presto, it should stay there. Now I've only recently started planting into dry soils. I normally uh, fill that partially with water but I find this technique first originally kind of noticed from Yuri's, my German friend, fellow professional aquascaper. He uh, saw a couple of videos of him doing this with the dry soil, so I thought I'd give it a go and it works really well. We tend not to get as many floaters. So the tank is deep, it's 70 centimetres high, hence I'm using a step ladder. I'm not a short guy. Thank you to Alan for getting me a step ladder today because I didn't bring one myself. The, the tank, like I said, 70 centimetres tall altogether, 60 centimetre water height. It does have a lid. It comes with uh, two 18 watt LED kind of strips, uh, but like I said earlier, Alan is supplementing it with a couple more. And it is important we do have moderate lighting at least to be able to punch down through that water column and reach the, the carpeting plants especially because obviously they're a lot shorter and therefore further away from the light source. It's 90 centimetres long and 50 centimetres front to back. Evolution Aqua Freshwater 900. Uh, but the, the unique thing about the EA Freshwater versus the Aquascaper is that it does have a lid and that presents some advantages. So you won't get as much water evaporation um, you can, you'll, main, you'll uh, retain more heat, uh, you won't have any fish jumping out. So there are distinct advantages, although from, a, from my perspective as an aquascaper and a creator, I prefer to go rimless myself. It presents you know, less distraction, you can look down into the scape and it's so much easier to maintain as well. But each to their own, there is a definitely a place for lids, even if they are awkward. <laughs> Okay, so I've prepared a load of crypts. I think there's five different species. We've got Cryptocoryne albida brown, beautiful kind of slender leaf, brown leaf. We've got Cryptocoryne novellii, Cryptocoryne wendetii green, wendetii brown, and Walkeri. Is that, is that five or six? Anyway, lots of crypts. Those that know me know I love my crypts. Super low maintenance, don't need a lot of light, virtually will never need pruning, ever. They just keep growing new leaves from there, from a rosette. Uh, and they just add a nice sense of height, nice colours, just a beautiful plant. You can get crypt melt, which is basically the plant kind of adapting to its new underwater state. So if you didn't know already, um, when you buy plants, um, when they come from the nursery, they're actually grown out of the water, which is called emerged growth. And they actually transform quite, um, quite significantly when they when they make a transformation to underwater growth, which we call submersed growth. So during that transition process, the crypt can kind of shed its leaf and then it will generate a new leaf. So it's nothing to worry about. So let's plant those now. Okay, I wanted to talk about this beautiful plant here called Juncus repens. Now, 
Um, I don't usually use this in aquascapes. I was actually inspired to use it by a recent workshop by Philippe Oliveri and he used it really effectively in an Aquascaper 900 recently. In fact, I'll leave a link up there right now. And it's just a, a really different plant. It's quite unique. It's a, kind of a stem plant, but it grows off shoots quite readily. It's been grown in its immersed state right now, so it's got little flowers on the end, which look really attractive. It will adapt slowly, like most plants, to its submerged growth, but it does retain this kind of beautiful kind of texture, almost like bamboo, like a fine bamboo. And it's just a, a really nice, fresh green plant. So just thought I'd uh, let you guys know about that. Junkus Reapens. Buy yours today. Next, I wanted to talk about Hydrocotyl tripartita. Now, this is a really interesting plant that can be buried, uh, planted in the substrate and it acts like a carpeting plant, or you can attach it to decor and it kind of creeps over everything. It's fairly light demanding, um, but really super fast grower, a bit of a weed, so it will need check, keeping in check, pruning, etc. And you can see this is one pot's worth. It's been grown in its, in its pot hydroponically for a few weeks, and you can see just how big uh, one portion as you get from one pot. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm actually going to attach it to the top of the wood and it's going to be really near the light so it's going to grow really healthily and hopefully kind of droop down the wood and like a vine kind of effect. I think it should look really great. So we've got the mass of plant there and there's actually kind of a bit of a, an area here where the wood, there's a section where we can just wedge it in and that is going to hopefully attach itself, droop over the wood we can almost train it to come down the wood, like I said, like a vine effect. So it's important we keep the plants from drying out. We don't want them to die. I've actually used about 30 pots here today. So it's really important to plant heavily right from the outset. Uh, the reason for that is it gives the best chance against algae. Algae is really common in new setups. So the more plants we use, the healthier those plants are, the better we look after those plants, the less chance we get getting algae. Okay, now it's time to attach our epiphyte plants or rheophyte plants. And we've got a couple of different species of Anubius. We've got Coffifolia, which is a beautiful leaf shape, uh, like a crinkled leaf. We've got Anubius Paxang, and we've also got Bucophalandras and some Bulbitis. Now, I'm hopeful that I can just wedge these into various positions. These are, apart from the Bulbitis, the Anubius and the Book of Landra, all shade tolerant, so I'm going to put them around the rocks and then the Bulbitis will stick into the wood. Okay, now one of my favourite ever plants in the world. If you know my channel, you know all about Trident Fern, beautiful plant. It's actually quite demanding in terms of the other microsorums, it's one of the more demanding will benefit from good lighting and CO2 injection, which is what we've got in here. And this is the beautiful Windelov fern, so named after Tropica's founder, Holger Windelov. So let's pop them in there right now. Okay, we're planted, ready to fill with water, fit the filtration in the CO2 kit. You can see it's already super mature. We've used about 30 pots of plants and I'll reiterate what I said earlier. It's really important to plant heavily with healthy plants right from the outset. That's gonna really help prevent these early algae issues that a lot of people experience. Just to kind of remind you guys what plants we've done. Helianthem, Tenelum in the foreground. We've got some Ludwigia super red in the background with Junkus Reapens and Cryptocorony Balanza. We've got various crypts around the mid ground and kind of underneath the wood in the shade. Attached to the wood, we've got Buca Valandra, Anubius, Bobitis, a couple of different types of Java fern. And at the top there, we've got the Hydrocotyl tripartita. So a really nice kind of mixture of plants, going to create really kind of complex textures and colours, and hopefully something for Alan to enjoy for the months and maybe years to come. So really happy with it, really strong hardscape, good planting, good equipment. Um, that's it, awesome.
that's it. That is how to aquascape a EA Freshwater 900 Nature Aquarium. Awesome tank, I'm really pleased with it. Most importantly, Alan's happy with it and he knows what he needs to do to maintain it. Alan's been a fish keeper pretty much all his life. I think it's his first kind of high-end aquascape, but really confident that he'll, he'll maintain it and I can come back in maybe a couple of months or so and do an update video for you all. It's a nature aquarium. It's big, it's tall. It's got ferns, crypts, anubias, bucophalandra, all the classics I love. And I love them for a reason. They're really low maintenance, easy to look after and sustainable so um, it, it's a classic layout nothing too groundbreaking i really like the way the wood kind of comes down it's obviously a really kind of dominating piece of wood and that's really important in aquascaping we talked about the importance of hardscape earlier in the in the film so guys i hope you enjoyed that i've got a question for you uh, you can probably guess what it might be what fish would you put in here now i'm thinking personally something quite tall bodied because it is a tall tank the aspect ratio would suit a tall bodied fish. Personally, I would go for something like angelfish or maybe mix thing with some tall bodied tetras. Really interested to know what your thoughts might be. So that's it from me. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Take care. Keep on scaping. Here we go. So the heavier we have. So the heavier you. So the, heavy you so the more densely. Uh, yeah. So the more, yeah. So <laughs> this is embarrassing. <laughs>